Hey you guys, Tomes of Terror time. It's horror book review time. And uh, this time around, we're going more horror than we have been the last few weeks. Because I feel like the last one was kind of a whodunit. And we've been doing more psychological horror. But this right here is more of a horror horror. And this is Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke. Now this is a book that I have seen uh, recommended in many places on Goodreads, on various other uh, book review channels that I've read. So I was like really excited to read it. Keelan Patrick Burke, I guess, is an Irish writer. Uh, this is the first book of his that I've read. Um, he did actually win a Bram Stoker Award for his novel, The Turtle Boy, which I have not read yet. And um, I've seen some of his other stuff recommended as well. I think he did a novella called Sour Candy, which a lot of people talk about, a novella called Blanky, which a lot of people talk about as well. So I'll probably get around to those eventually. Um, but I'm just saying that I don't really have a basis of comparison of like, you know, this is similar to the style or the subject matter of his other books. But um, so I can just kind of judge it on its own merits. I will say I don't usually do this like for the reviews, like especially considering the the books that I've reviewed thus far. Um, this one is going to have a uh, content warning. Now, if you do not like um, horror stories about excessive gore, rape, cannibalism, uh, you know, limbs being cut off, evisc eviscerations, people being sewn inside of other people, stuff like that. Um, if you don't like that, this is probably not the book for you. This is very, very gory, very extreme, very over the top. But that said, it's also um, a really good book. I found it a really compelling uh, story and there was some pretty gross shit in it and it takes quite a lot to gross me out. But some scenes in this kind of did. This is going to be more, a lot of people have compared this to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, Deliverance, Hostel, that kind of stuff where it's like people that kind of fall into the clutches of these cannibalistic backwoods rednecks and, you know, shit ensues. But the thing that's kind of different about this one that I don't think I've ever read another book that's kind of like this or approached from this angle is that it's not describing like a group of people who fall into the hands of these like crazy, like hillbilly motherfuckers. And then like the shit that happens to them. This story actually begins after all of that has happened. And one girl has escaped. And so the book kind of details the aftermath, like what happens in the aftermath of it, like people going back to seek revenge, like, you know, just that kind of thing. So I thought that was like a really fascinating, you know, way to start a story and like really kind of original because you don't really see a lot of, you know, these types of stories told from that perspective. So I thought that was actually uh, pretty cool and like a pretty cool idea. So our main character is a girl named Claire Lambert. And apparently you don't really know at the very beginning of the book because they don't give a lot of insight into her character and stuff because basically at the very beginning of the book, she's just escaped from the clutches of this crazy family and, you know, is, is trying to get away and she's been grievously wounded. Um, she's been raped multiple times. You know, she has a bunch of stab wounds. Uh, she's had one of her eyes cut out. She's had her fingers cut off, some of her toes cut off. So she's uh, not in good shape, but she is just trying to get the hell away from this place. And she gets picked up by a man named Jack and his son, uh, named Pete, who I guess is about the same age as her. So I guess like 1920, somewhere around that area. So this all takes place in a place called Elkwood, Alabama. Now, as the story goes on, you actually find out that Claire, her boyfriend, Danny, and two of their friends, like another couple, had been kind of doing a road trip or something of that nature and had kind of just at random decided to go wander around this, you know, random dinky little rural town in, in Alabama and had um, fallen afoul of a family of cannibals, kind of like the Sawyer family, but much, much worse, if I can say that. These are the Merrill clan. Now, the Merrills are... Uh, it's, you know, it's an older man named Papa in gray and uh, his wife, Mama in bed, who is basically like this big, enormous, like fat woman um, who can't get out of bed. And she's just been in the bed a long time. And like all of their sons, uh, they did once have a daughter, but they get into what happened to her at some point. 
these people, they're these kind of really, really backwoods rural and, you know, and they're also like really like religious nuts. You know what I mean? Like they actually really think that God has told them that they have to kill what they call the men of the world. So they actually believe that they are doing the right thing by just killing people that wander into their land and also torturing them, raping them, eating them, stealing all their stuff, like basically doing that. And they don't really seem to think, I don't know if I'd say that they don't seem to think there's anything wrong with it, but they think that they're kind of on a mission. You know what I mean? So apparently the dad and the mom uh, have instilled this in their children. Uh, the youngest child, I wasn't real clear because they have like a bunch of kids. I think the youngest kid is Isaac and I think he's 12, but they've basically all been trained to be killers. So they're all essentially the same as their parents and uh, they'll, they will do whatever their dad tells them to do because uh, for them, like the word of their mom and dad is like, you know, God's word. So they just go ahead and do whatever with the raping and the killing. Now, as I said, at the beginning of the book, you know, the, these four college students who are from, you know, somewhere up north uh, have been like kind of vacationing down there and, you know, wandered into these people's territory. Three of them, including Claire's boyfriend, have been killed in various horrible ways. I believe Danny had his face taken off. Like, so there was somebody, this is a terrible like, a lot of terrible shit happens in this book, okay? So I'm just, like, warning you. So Claire, as fucked up as she is, managed to kill one of the sons, Matt, uh, who was a little bit slow, and uh, has managed to escape. And as I said, she got picked up. She got taken to a doctor who got her seen to, although her injuries were kind of too... He's kind of like a country doctor. You know, his name was Doc Wellman. And uh, so he tried to help her out as best he can. But the boy, Pete... Uh, who was the son of Jack, who had uh, helped her out, like found her in the street, like naked and bleeding and like picked her up and took her to the doctor. The doctor says, you know, to Pete, you you know, you guys will have to take her to the bigger hospital, like, you know, the, the state hospital or whatever, because, you know, I don't have the resources here. This is just my house. You know, she is essentially the final girl. This is almost kind of like if the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, like the end where Sally gets in the truck and then drives away like all bloody and she's like laughing her ass off. And then, you know, Leatherface is like, God damn it, with the chainsaw and everything. This is essentially like what happens after that. You know what I mean? Because she escapes and then uh, one of the sons of the Merrill family, Luke, who I think is the oldest, he is actually one of the only kids of this, you know, fucked up family that is actually starting to doubt that what they're doing is the right thing. Um, so he's very conflicted about it. So he is given the task to kind of like, you know, save face because, uh, you know, there was some stuff with his sister, you know, who the family murdered. And, you know, I won't get too much into that because that's kind of like a side plot. But that was one of the things that has started to turn him against his family and has, um, you know, showed him that maybe what they're doing is wrong. So he's having doubts about that. But he, so to kind of get back in his dad's good graces, uh, Papa and Gray sends him to go fetch the girl, like get her back so they can like kill her like they killed the rest of her friends and eat her like to take her strength or whatever. He actually fails in that because she gets rescued before he can get to her. At which point the Merrill clan decide that they're going to have to, since they couldn't find her, they decide they're going to punish the people that that helped her get away. And they're also going to have to move somewhere else. And at some point they figure, and rightly so, that some people are going to come back looking for them. So basically what the point of this story is, I mean, it's called Kin, and they're talking about you know, Kin, the Merrill family, obviously the crazy lunatic, like Bible thumping cannibals who live out in the woods and kill people for shits and giggles. Um, they're talking about that, but they're also talking about the kin of the victims, like the people. It, it's kind of almost like this one tragedy that happened. Like, you know, these three people that got killed, this one woman that almost got killed when she was like, you know, fuck, and she's like fucked up and messed up, like beyond you know, recognition, like her whole entire life has changed. Um, so it's almost kind of like all the tendrils that sprout forth from that, because what happens after that is that 
Uh, the brother of one of uh, Claire's boyfriend, who was uh, murdered down there, he decides he wants to go back and take this family out. Claire decides she wants to go back. Pete has kind of fallen in love with her and he wants to go back and punish them because what ends up happening is that the Merrill family are, one, so mean and horrible and will basically kill anyone that fucks with them, but also they own a whole bunch of the land, like in the county. So basically everybody kind of knows that what they've been up to, like every time a stranger wanders into the town and like is never seen again, everyone's just like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? So everyone just kind of pretends that it's not happening, um, you know, including the authorities and everything. So basically after she gets away, there's kind of like a cover up in this little town because nobody wants the Merrill clan coming after them. So it's almost kind of like some people have to decide if they want to risk their own life, you know, to do the right thing and bring these people to justice or take them out or whatever. So it's basically kind of like there's all these different characters, you know, who weren't there, uh, you know, they didn't see what happened to her, but are affected by it all the same, either because one of their relatives was killed there or because, you know, there's a thing with Pete and like his stepmom, um, you know, and him kind of going off and finding her and like her kind of getting involved, even though she, you know, was in a completely different city and everything. That's kind of what it's. So it's kind of like the aftermath of the tragedy. And it's almost, I don't know if I'd say that it's hammering a point home of, you know, one atrocity causing a bunch of other ones or like, or turning people into, monsters akin to what the Merrill clan were, because I don't think anyone's going to come away from it thinking that those people didn't deserve to be like taken out because they absolutely did like all the shit that they did. But it's interesting how, you know, one of the characters named Finch, uh, his brother was killed uh, by the family and he, you know, he's kind of an Iraqi war veteran and he's kind of like, you know, was there, I don't know if it was like Abu Ghraib or whatever, but he's kind of like, oh, it was like, is kind of like having his own uh, PTSD about shit he did over there and like, you know, killing innocent people. And so it's almost kind of like he knows what's going to happen when he goes there and he knows it's not really the right thing to do. He's giving into his anger. He's doing this and that and the other thing, but it's almost like he can't stop himself. Um, so it's kind of that too. It's kind of like talking about how some people just need revenge or need, you know, need that kind of closure, even though they know, even if they know, like they don't necessarily think it's going to bring them any closure. It's almost like they have to do it. So it kind of has a lot of that too. Like I will say now I've seen some, some reviews, most of the reviews of this are very good. Some reviews seem to say like the beginning of it's really good and the end of it's really good, but some of the middle part was um, like sagged a little, which I don't think I necessarily agree with that. It's not a really long book. The type is actually really small. Um, so it's actually like longer than it appears, I guess, because I think the page count is almost like 200 or something. But, um, you know, the like I said, the, the font is a little bit smaller. So it's actually kind of longer than like more shit happens in it. But I will say that, you know, the beginning, which is really compelling about her escaping and, you know, the father and son picking her up and then like them realizing that now there's a target on their back because, you know, they helped her. And then like the kind of cover up and, you know, the anger that that stirs up in the characters as well as in the reader. But then after after that, it kind of goes for a second. I was kind of like, I was reading it and I'm like, well, wait, well, who's this now? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, there's a lot of characters that were only like tangentially related to like the original incident. It, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get into, because it goes back and forth a lot, like to, um, you know, to this character, to that character it goes, it goes from Pete and like looking for his mom. And then it goes like back to Finch and him trying to figure out where this family has gone so he can go get them. And then it's talking about Claire and it's talking about, you know, her relationship with her sister and all this other kind of stuff. So there's a there's a lot of characters and it switches back and forth between them like pretty uh, freely. So know that going in, like that's kind of the middle part is everyone kind of figuring out what they're going to do, how they're going to like come to the, you know, conclusion of this, you know, or put this behind them and, you know, their own ways of dealing with the grief and the trauma and things like that. So there, so there's a lot of that. And so it might seem like when you first read it and you're like this, it has this world bang, like really graphic, gory beginning. And then it kind of just goes into like, 
the mode where it's just back and forth all the characters and they're just like figuring out what they're going to do like they're planning and stuff but like i said that didn't bother me but i have seen i mean i can see why some people were bothered by that but i wasn't bothered by that now again i will say that if you are not a fan of i wouldn't call this torture porn but if you're not a fan of that kind of thing you will probably not like this because it is very graphic it is very gory a lot of people die a lot of really fucked up shit happens so just be warned if that doesn't sound like something you would like like i said the gore didn't bother me all that much some things that bothered me were more like because some of the descriptions of like mama in bed's room and like w- like how it smelled and stuff that probably made me sicker than like a lot of the gore which i don't know what that says about me in a way that's like that's a compliment to like keelan patrick burke's writing though because the fact that he actually like made me smell it you know what i mean it's like because the writing is like very very descriptive uh which is one reason i think that the gore hits so much harder uh because he's so good at like describing what it looks like describing what it smells like um you know so it almost kind of like puts you in it it's like very it's like an abattoir you know what i mean another thing i really liked was that he kind of goes a lot into the merrill family and like their the family are monsters essentially they're just horrible horrible people who should just wipe be wiped off the face of the earth but i like that he kind of i don't know if i'd say he humanizes them but he does like have some chapters where he says what you know what their thoughts are at least what papa and gray's thoughts are and like i said the the son luke that is uh, starting to question uh the authority of his dad and like maybe what they're doing is wrong so there's some of that and i like that because that's that gave it like another dimension and uh the family itself were actually as horrible as they were they were actually kind of interesting just because you know even though they're clearly villains they're doing it for a purpose like they think they have a purpose and they think that it's divinely ordained which is messed up which is it's even more messed up than somebody just doing it for re- just because randomly or like for fun or because they get off on it or something they actually have like a whole twisted worldview that makes them scarier in my opinion and i so i like those scenes where he kind of goes into their heads or like goes into like what their whole what their whole entire worldview is and it's like really really messed up i don't know i don't know if i'd say it's like two sides of the same coin because you know they're hunting people you know that come onto their land and they think they have a right to and then you have all these people on the other side the good people who are also essentially gonna go and hunt them just as punishment for what they did to this girl like i said i don't think he's making a statement it's like oh these people are no better than those people because that's obviously bullshit it's it's just an an interesting story the way it's kind of like you know violence begetting violence and just this one you know atrocity inspiring a bunch of other ones in a bunch of people who weren't even there so i think that was like kind of a cool aspect of the story that i really liked it made it a lot more thought provoking than just a gore fest or just like a regular kind of slasher texas chainsaw massacre kind of thing it actually had something to say and it had like a lot of depth to it so i really liked that a lot but yeah as i said i really really liked this book i found it very compelling uh very well written very descriptive like the you know the descriptions of some of the stuff was actually quite beautiful even though it's a lot of the imagery is very grotesque but as i said if you don't like really gross shit like really gory shit then this will not be your cup of tea but if you do like really kind of more extreme horror if you like like jack ketchum or um uh richard layman maybe if you like authors like that then you will probably dig this as well i believe um and i haven't read it yet because i reviewed another anya alborn book i reviewed uh if you see if you see her like a few weeks ago but apparently she also wrote a book called brother which i've heard is very similar to this one although not quite as graphic um so i'll probably get to that one as well like eventually and i'll see if it's uh as similar as a lot of people have said but a lot of people brought that up if you're really into like extreme horror really graphic horror then you will probably dig this a lot and uh like i said i'll be reading some of his other books too in the future and we'll review some of those too so that'll do it for this tomes of terror and i'll see you on the next one bye